turn that on. I forgot. I walked over to turn to shut the door.
this song kind of opening prayer and following the prayer will offer the Lord's Supper. Lord, we come before thee. church this morning and sing songs of praises to you and petition you in prayer and do the same again this evening and take the Lord's Supper. <coughs> Dear God, we ask you to be with this church. We ask you to watch over them and care for them. We ask you to be with us in ways that we might always walk in the light that you would shine upon us. Dear God, we ask you to be with the elders and the deacons here and their families. We ask you to watch over them and care for them. Be with the be with each one of us, dear God, and be with us that we always look to you for guidance and for strength. Dear God, we ask you to be those who have been mentioned sick. We have a number, dear God, and we ask you to please watch over them and care for them. Give them our strength back if it be thy will. Dear God, I ask you to go with us through the remainder of this service. I ask you, dear God, to watch over and care for us. Please forgive us of all of our sins. In your blessed holy name we pray. Amen. Are there any present who were unable to participate in the Lord's Supper this morning? Let's go to our Father and bless the bread. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for today and we thank you for this Lord's Day that to us as Christians, we are allowed to come together and remember the death of your Son, how his body was broken on the cross in our stead. We ask you will be with those who are partaking tonight, that they will do so in a manner that's pleasing to you. In Christ's name, amen. In like manner, Father, we thank you for this fruit <clears throat> of the vine that again represents the death of your Son and the blood that he shed for us. 
Again, be with those who are protecting. In Christ's name, amen. to have another opportunity to worship the Lord our God in spirit and in truth. If you have your personal copy of God's Word, please turn with me, if you will, to the book of 1 Peter. The chapter is 2, and the verse is 9. 1 Peter, the chapter is 2, and the verse is 9. There the Bible reads, But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession. And this is the part that I want us to emphasize, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. This morning, we discussed the fact that we should not be comfortable. In fact, we should be uncomfortable knowing that there are people around us on the path that is going to burn for all eternity. We have to understand that there is a need for us to speak up. We should have an urgency to open our mouths and tell people about the gospel message. Unfortunately, for some, it is more appealing to talk 
about less important non-spiritual matters than to talk about the good news that has the ability to save the souls of men. Some find more pleasure in speaking about others than the one who can rescue us. There is a need for us to speak up, but ladies and gentlemen, we must do so properly. So with these things in mind, this evening we will be studying the subject, if we are going to talk about someone today. If we are going to talk about someone today. Before we get into the the meat of this lesson, I want us to look at our first point, and that is that we should ask ourselves this question, is our tongue tamed or is it lacking compassion? Before we get into, again, thinking about if we are going to talk about someone today, we should ask ourselves this question. Is our tongue tamed or is it lacking compassion? You see, God calls for the control of the tongue. We are lying to ourselves if we think that we can call ourselves Christians and not be in control of our words. Turn with me, if you will, to the book of James. The chapter is 1 and the verse is 26. James, the chapter is 1 and the verse is 26. There the Bible reads, If anyone thinks he is religious and does not bridle his tongue, but deceives his heart, this person's religion is worthless. James here condemns the tongue that is unbridled and says that it is of no use to have, some, to, to have a tongue that is not in control. And the person who has the inability to control their tongue, their religion is worthless. In James chapter 1 and the verses 19, we read, among other things, that we are to be slow to speak. Now, what does it mean to be slow to speak? It means to think about what we are going to say before we say it. It means to be mindful of the words that we are going to use. If we are of the mindset that God is pleased with us just speaking our mind or telling it like it is, ladies and gentlemen, we are fooling ourselves. James describes the tongue as needing to be bridled. A bridle is a device that goes into the mouth of a horse and it is used to restrain or to control the horse. Without this device, the horse runs freely and unbridled tongues belong to those who do not have the ability to control their speech and they allow their speech to just run wild and and things to just go to, to be said without thinking about what it is that is coming out of our mouths. A gun that is under control can do great good, but an uncontrolled gun does great damage. Ladies and gentlemen, we are in possession of a powerful weapon, our tongue. And when used properly, it can do great good. But when used improperly, it can do great evil. Again, is our tongue controlled or is it without compassion? We must understand that our speech lacks compassion when we engage in things like gossip. This goes for both the gossiper, the one who is doing the gossiping, as well as the gossip e, if you will, the one who is allowing the gossip. <clears throat> Our speech should be seasoned with salt. It is to be uplifting. In 1 Timothy, the chapter is 5, and the verse is 13. 1 Timothy 5, 13, the Bible reads, Besides that, they learn to be idlers going about from house to house, not only idlers, but also gossips and busybodies saying what they should not. To gossip is to say things that ought not to be said. Some attempt to come up with reasons as to why it is okay to gossip. But verses like Romans chapter 1 verse 29 number gossip among the things that the unrighteous and the ungodly do. So we ask ourselves this question, what is gossip? Some falsely believe gossip to be the communication of information, nothing more, nothing less. But gossip is communication That is for the detriment of others and not for their benefit. To gossip is to relay information for the purpose of damaging the reputation of someone else. Whether that information is true or false is irrelevant. Permanent damage can be done with the truth as well as with a lie. Damage can uh, not only cause one's reputation to be negatively affected, but also their influence. 
Even if something is a lie, it will cause people to question the integrity of that individual. If I were to say something about one of you or if one of you were to say something about me and just throw it out there and it not even be true. It could, it could be greatly damaging. It can be damaging to the point where if someone thinks about me, they might associate what you said, even though it may be a lie, with me. Again, it can damage our reputation. It can damage our influence. Whatever is said is now in another individual's head. To gossip is to be in other people's business. If we have to question whether or not we should be saying or whether or not we should be told something, it is probably gossip. We should also ask ourselves this question. What is the motive behind saying what we are about to say? So is our tongue tamed or is it lacking compassion? And that brings us to our second point on this evening, and that is this. We should think about the content of our speech. We should think about the content of our our speech. Now, think is an acronym, and we're going to look at every letter beginning with T. T stands for true. Is what I am about to say true? Let us look at Colossians chapter 3, verses 9 and 10. Colossians, the chapter is 3, and the verses are 9 and 10. There the Bible reads, Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have put off the old self with its practices and have put on the new self which is being renewed in knowledge after the image of its creator. Ladies and gentlemen, every word we speak should be words of truth. But we should also keep in mind that just because something is true does not mean that we should say it. It does not give us the right to proclaim it. You know, my wife knows a lot of truths about me. But just because something is true, again, does not mean it should be said. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 15 records for us that we are to speak in the excuse me to speak the truth in love. Love should be behind every word we say. So, is what we are about to say true? Not only should we consider if it's true, but the second point that we should make is is what I am about to say helpful? Is what I'm about to say beneficial to my audience? If it is, how so? How will it benefit them? For something to be beneficial, it must produce good results. Is that the case? Talking to someone about the scriptures is beneficial to their soul. But this does not just pertain to spiritual things. We have to understand that every word that we say should be true, and the words that we say should also be helpful. You know, as all of us know, as many of you know, Robert broke his arm. We got in a car accident, Robert broke his arm. We had to go to the emergency room and we were in Bowling Green in the emergency room and the doctor took x-rays. He came back and, uh, you know, he said, yeah, your son's your son's arm's broken. Uh, he's going to need to see an orthopedic surgeon. And there I'm just like, OK, you know, you can you can stop talking. I mean, I know where I'm going to go. He said, oh, you know, well, uh, I can I can refer you to someone here in Bowling Green or if you live in another part of Kentucky. And I'm like, yeah, man, I, I got it. I got it. So I called Brother Spencer and, and I asked him, I said, hey, Brother Spencer, you know, this is the case. This is what happened. And the next day, Brother Spencer said, oh, well, come, come by tomorrow. Come by tomorrow. I'll take a look at it. I'll, I'll do some x-rays, and, and we'll, we'll see where we go from there. So Brother Spencer takes the x-rays, and he says, uh, he comes in, and, and he was very helpful. He said, hey, this is the situation. This is where the break is. This is what's going to happen if the break is not fixed. So he said, this was, he showed us uh, another x-ray of a, of a little boy who, who broke his arm, pretty much the same exact thing that Robert did. And he said, this is, you know, the surgery, 10 minutes, he'll be good to go. He does need the surgery. Otherwise, you know, there could be just all of these, these different things that could happen. So his words were very helpful to us in determining whether or not Robert needed the surgery. But not only that, you know, Robert, I mean, he's never had surgery before. So, you know, he, he's, kind of freaking out about it. He doesn't know what's going to happen. He doesn't know what's going on. So my words were helpful to him in that I told him, hey, who's going to be doing your surgery? And he said, Mr. Spencer. And I said, now, would you rather Mr. Spencer do the surgery or some, some stranger that you don't know? Someone that doesn't really care about you like Mr. Spencer cares about you. 
And he said, well, Mr. Spencer, I would rather him, I would rather him do the surgery. So my words to him were helpful. Just like Brother Spencer's words to us were helpful. Just like our words to each other should be helpful. Just like our words to the world around us should be helpful. Our speech should be words that are helpful and not harmful. So is what we are saying true? Is what we are about to say helpful? The next thing that we have to consider is what I'm about to say inspiring. To be inspiring is to cause great emotional or mental stimulation to produce a feeling to, to excuse me to produce feelings or thoughts do our words inspire or encourage others or do people leave our conversation with great discouragement i'm sure that each and every one of us has unfortunately probably engaged in a conversation with someone whose words are more demoralizing than they are inspiring but our words should be guided by god and our words should offer inspiration and encouragement to others to do the right things according to him. So our words should be true. They should be helpful. Our words should be inspiring. And the fourth thing that we must consider at the end is, is what I'm about to say necessary? Does what I'm about to say need to be said at all? And does it need to be said to the person that I am going to say it to? We might have words of truth. We might have words that are helpful. We might have words that are inspiring. But what is the purpose of saying them? Now, what I mean by that is sometimes people just want an ear to listen. You know, as a husband, when my wife comes to me and, and when something's going on with her, when she's, you know, dealing with something in her life, it's, it's kind of my mentality to, OK, I need to I need to try and fix it. I need to offer solutions. Right. But sometimes she just wants to vent to me. Sometimes she just feels like she needs to get things off her chest, and that is okay. Maybe they are going through something, and they just want someone to hear them out. Now, that does not mean that we cannot offer words to others if the, uh, unless they make the request. That that's the only time that we can offer words to others is if they make the request. There may come a time when it is necessary for us to speak up, but... We should use proper judgment to determine when. If we know that a brother or that a sister is being pulled back into the world because of a particular sin, then it is absolutely necessary for us to speak up and help save that soul from destruction. So again, is our words true? Are, are, excuse me, are our words true? Are they helpful? Are they inspiring? Are they necessary? And the K is, is our words, excuse me, are our words kind? To be kind is to be of a sympathetic nature. In Proverbs chapter 16, and the verse is 24, the Bible reads, Gracious words are like a honeycomb, sweetness to the soul and healthy to the body. Kind words can bring healing to those who are in pain. They can bring help to those who are suffering. Ladies and gentlemen, we do not want to be like the friends of Job who are described in Job chapter 16 and the verses 2 as miserable comforters for failing to use words and speak words of kindness to their friend who was in agony. So this is what we should consider. We should think about the content of our speech. Is our speech true? Is it helpful? Is it inspiring? Is it necessary? Is it kind? And that brings us to our third and our final point on this evening. If we are going to talk about someone today, let us talk about Jesus. If we are going to talk about someone today, let us talk about Jesus. Now, you, you might be wondering, well, you know, what, why was 1 Peter chapter 2 and the verses 9 our scriptural text? Well, I want us to go there and read that again. Where it reads, but you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. Again, ladies and gentlemen, if we are going to talk about someone today, why not talk about Jesus? Who better and who more important to talk about than Jesus Christ himself? Again, going back to our scriptural text, we see the purpose for which we have been chosen. 
the purpose for which God has made us a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession is so we can proclaim, so we can tell the world of the God who rescued us out of darkness and into his marvelous light. That is what God has done for each and every one of us who have obeyed the gospel. He has rescued us from the darkness that we were lost in. And he has brought us to his marvelous light. We need to make sure that not only our words, but our actions proclaim the greatness of the God that we serve. The greatness of the God who rescued us out of darkness into his glorious and his marvelous light. We must take seriously our need to be examples to those around us. God has rescued us for this very purpose. And we must remember that we are responsible for the spreading of the gospel, not the latest gossip. You know, sometimes we want to talk about stuff. Sometimes we are, we are put in positions and we are given opportunities to talk about things. Why not talk about that which is good? Why not talk about that which brings glory to our Heavenly Father? Ladies and gentlemen, we should keep from getting involved in the gossip of the world. And, you know, nothing was brought to my attention. I didn't see or hear anything that, that, that I felt that, oh, this is a lesson that needs to be heard. But it's always good to hear things. It's always good to hear things from the scriptures. Whether or not it's something that we are struggling with, it's a good reminder. You know, that's what Peter says. Peter says that he says certain things by way of reminder. So we should just be reminded of what we are talking about. The content of our speech. What is it that we are saying? Are we proclaiming the gospel or are we proclaiming the latest gossip? When we think about what Jesus said before he ascended to heaven, he called his disciples and he said in Mark chapter 16 and the verses 15, go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation. Verse 16, baptizing them in the, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And I know it's... Um, I, might be, I might be getting Mark, uh, excuse me, Matthew 28, 20 in there a little bit. But the, the purpose is that God told us, he called us to proclaim the gospel. He called us to go out into the world and to tell people about the gospel. He told us to tell people about the good news of him. One does great good for all parties, speaking of the gospel or the latest gossip. And the other does great harm. And I want us to ask ourselves this question. Which are we involving ourselves in? Are we involving ourselves in telling people, talking to people about Jesus? Or talking to people about other men and other women? More people need to hear about Jesus. And if we are not out there spreading the truth about him, we just leave opportunity. We just leave room for lies, more lies to be told, for more lies to be spread about Jesus. You know, sometimes I'll hear people say things or, you know, uh, a spiritual conversation will come up and, and people will say, oh, well, you know, the Bible says that I just have to accept Jesus in my heart. Or, oh, well, you know, the Bible says that, that it's okay to do this or that it's okay to do that. Or, you know, the Bible says this. Well, me being someone who knows what the Bible says, what am I saying? What, what am I confirming? What am I denying? If I just keep quiet, if I just keep silent, I, am just, I, make, I can give the appearance that I'm confirming everything that they're saying, that it's accurate, that it's true. We must speak up for Jesus. We must speak up for the souls of those around us. We must do our part that God may be glorified and that souls may come to Christ. Now, were the world to continue as it has from the beginning... Were Jesus not to come today, and uh, were, we, were we blessed with the remainder of this day, I want us to ask ourselves this question, how will this day end? What will have been accomplished? Will the world know the hatred that we have for this person or that person? Will the world know the latest gossip or personal details about this person or that person? Or will the world know the love we have for Jesus. And more importantly, will the world know the love Jesus has for those in the world? Are we going to speak up for Jesus today? When I was putting these lessons together, this morning's lesson and this lesson as well, you know, it, I, I just really was focused on 
the idea of evangelism, the idea of our need to talk to people about Jesus, our need to tell people what they need to hear, our need to proclaim the message that has the ability to save their souls instead of getting caught up in everything that the world around us wants to get caught up in, instead of talking about everything that the world around us wants to talk about. Will the latest gossip have been spread further by our lips? Or will the borders of the heavenly kingdom be expanded because we said what needed to be said about Christ? There's a saying, and that saying is, life is short. And I believe a more accurate saying is, life isn't short, we just waste our time. And on top of that, not only do we at times waste our time, we also waste our words. We have the word of truth. We know what we need in order to tell people what they need to hear to come to Christ. We have been the ones, we, we have been delivered from the darkness. We have the opportunity, we have the ability to help others be delivered from that same darkness as well. Are we going to do our part? Are we going to take individual responsibility and talk to the people around us that we know need to hear the gospel? You know, we all have our own circles. We all have people that we know. There's people you know that I don't know. There's people I know that you don't know. <coughs> Excuse me. And we all have people that we can touch, people that we can reach out to, people that we can positively, spiritually affect by telling them what they need to hear. So I hope that the lessons that we have heard this morning are helping us to understand our need, the necessity to go into the world and to tell those who are lost, those who are dying, those who are on the path to be eternally separated from God, of their need to have a right relationship with Jesus. I hope that we consider the fact that this individual's last opportunity to hear the truth proclaimed might come from our lips. And we might take these things and that we might go into the world and help others come to Christ. So where do you stand on this evening? If you are here and you are not a child of God, you have the opportunity to become one. You have the opportunity to be a child of God by obeying the gospel, which begins with hearing God's word, which we have done on this morning. Excuse me, on this evening, believing Jesus Christ to be the son of God repenting, turning away from sin, turning to God, confessing Christ to be the Son of God, being baptized for the forgiveness of sins and rising up to walk in newness of life. That is what the scriptures teach all must do in order to have a right relationship with him. Maybe you're here and you are a Christian. Maybe talking to people about Jesus makes you uncomfortable. Maybe talking to people about Jesus, maybe there are, there are people in your life and you just don't want to hurt their feelings. You don't want to make that relationship awkward by talking to them about God or talking to them about spiritual matters. We have to remember that a lot more than people's feelings are going to get hurt if they, are spent, if they spend eternity separated from God. We have an obligation as followers of Christ. We have an obligation as people who know the truth to go out and tell people about that truth. And if you have not done so, if you have been, not, not been the example, you have not been proclaiming in your words or proclaiming in your actions, the individual, the follower of Christ that you are to be, you have the opportunity to make things right by praying to God and asking him for forgiveness, by repenting, having that change of mind that leads to a change of life, and by asking for prayers on your behalf from your brothers and your sisters in Christ. Maybe you're here and you're looking for a place to call home. Maybe you want to join yourself to a local congregation that does all that the Lord authorizes. That is exactly what we do. Nothing more, nothing less. So if you need to become a, ch a child of God, if you are a child of God and, and you've allowed the, the things of this world to distract you from the obligations and, and the responsibilities that you have to Christ, or if you are just looking for a place to call home and you would like to join yourself to this congregation, we ask that you come forward while together we stand and sing the song that has been selected.
announced before we're dismissed in prayer. Mark. <coughs> Let us pray. Dear God, our Heavenly Father, it is with, with much gratitude that we come before you in prayer this evening. We are so thankful that we've been able to be here this day to worship you, to sing songs of praise, to petition you in prayer, to remember the Lord's death on the cross. And we pray that you will help us to always stay focused on Christ in our lives and stay focused on how we can share the good news to others as we have opportunity. Help us to set good examples for those that we come in contact with, those of our friends and family, and <clears throat> that we encourage them, Father, to look to you, look to Christ, and may we have the right words to say to them as we approach them, Father, with kindness and humility and with the truth of your gospel. We pray that you will be with us this week. Help us to always look to you for strength, look to you for guidance, and lean upon each other, Father, as we go through life's journey and this Christian life. And we pray that you will help us through the struggles that we have. We pray that your forgiveness of those things that we do against your will, forgiveness for those things that we leave undone that we know we should do. We pray that you will be with those that cannot be with us this, this day and this evening. <clears throat> May they be able to come back with us once again, Father, if they are ill. If they are, there are many, Father, that are shut in and we are mindful of, of them and being cared for in uh, professional homes. And we pray that you will help uh, those that are administering to their needs, Father, that they will be comforted. We pray that you'll bless us in this area as we strive to spread the gospel to this community and we're thankful for Carlos and his standing for the truth and we may, may, may he have a long life of serving you, Father, and proclaiming your gospel. We pray that you'll guide us in all that we do, forgive us of our sin. This is our prayer.